What's going on, everyone? We're here at the one and only Michael Zuber's event, yeah. the ORAD event. And you guys, all of you, right, are part of the One Reno at a Time community. And if you don't know, you already know my brother, Tyler Young Guerrero. So He's good. Man. So good. This is so fun because we haven't got, we haven't hung out a lot. So it's good that yeah. we get to hang. We're here with Michael Zuber and just yeah. what, a, what a great event. It's a little different. We're always like vibing out, but we never have mics. It's awesome. This is, and we've been wanting to do this for so long. Right. And here we are. We finally get to sit down and talk business. I think um, a couple things that I think just talking about, because we were talking at dinner last night, um, opportunities in 2024. Mm. So many good businesses, like so many good business opportunities for us on buying deals, wholesaling, assigning, flipping, uh, keeping deals, portfolioing deals. Just what are you seeing right now yeah. for you? Uh, 2024, you know, any of you guys in the real estate field, I, I think there's going to be a big, big, big sector for innovations uh, out of state. However, you got to be very careful, right? Uh, one thing that that is um, trendy, and you guys all know, is innovation. Now, what is innovation, right? Innovation is you're going in, you're getting a deal under contract uh, for X amount of price with the seller, and then you're putting that deal on the market. Now, the problem with innovation is that it's saying that I can sign on the seller's behalf. So if you guys are in California, you got to be a little careful with that right um especially certain states like just be very careful with the novations we're hearing a lot of you know novation trendy novations yeah. that's the opportunity so be careful there i just want to touch on that on the other sector i also and i'm going to ask ty this there's also a big 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 advantage of acquiring rentals in a different way that we all know how to acquire rentals right it's no longer the regular traditional purchase right and then outside of that i see a big sector in those that have been in the wholesale game, those that have been in the real estate game, I, I firmly believe now is the year to make a lot of money in wholesale if yep. you have been in the game, right? If you haven't and you're now just getting in and, and you know, not, not to discourage anybody, but if you're just getting into the wholesale game and you guys don't have, you know, a good amount of marketing dollars or you're not willing to go out there and really put in the time, door knock, cold call, do what you need to do, it's going to be a little challenging, but the opportunity window is huge, right? What are you seeing for the opportunities on the purchases for rentals and uh, short-term and long-term? Yeah. So it, it's interesting because the amount of transactions for like realtors, for investors, right? We've been in a low inventory market for basically the last three or four years. And so that I think is going to continue. But I think just for people to sharpen up and learn about creative finance, seller finance, um, subject to, of course, you know, it's all the buzzword. And even like when you talk about novations, one of the things that, like you said about liability is just making sure that you really understand your, understand your strategy hmm. and that, you know, to really, like, if you're going to pursue subject twos, learn as much and go deep down the rabbit hole, talk to people that are actually doing it, you know, really understand in your state, in your marketplace. But I would say that because of something you've talked about, we've talked about a lot is the, you know, baby boomers, mm -hmm. um, people talking about transference of wealth and right. that because a lot of people I deal with, you deal with burned out landlords, people mm -hmm. that are just tired, people that have owned properties or people that just want to downsize and get out of the headache and the hassle right. of a high maintenance rental property or properties right. and being able to create an easy button, create an easy solution so that people can get out. So Huge. Wh what are you Huge. like? I know for you, you do a lot of marketing and you know, you're in SoCal and it's like, if people think by the way, everybody says, Oh, my market's different. My market's competitive, whatever the case may be. I've got to say there, there's, there can't be many markets more competitive than Orange County, the Inland Empire, LA, San Diego. What right. are you seeing in Southern California? Yeah. I'm seeing that you have some, you know, call it three or four, five big players. And then you have a bunch of little players and there's not that many people in between. Yeah. Right. Why? Because everybody thinks it's so hard that they run out of the market. Right. And I got to tell you, it's not that hard. You just got to commit to it. Right. Like we, we made a decision to go out of state. What was it two years ago? That was hard. Going out of state was hard. Like we just talked about, you know, tell them the hard, tell them like, that, like running a comparable, like Ty, if I, if I threw a deal in Fairfield, right to you, how fast can you comp that deal? Minutes. Minutes, right? I throw a deal for, to you in North Carolina in a random city that you have no idea. How long is that taking you? 
Uh, no, like hours and maybe even then I'm confused and don't have the certainty. And we're re reaching out to real estate agents and we're trying to find the yeah. right comp. We have no access to the MLS. Property radar can only give us so much info. Batch leads can only give us so much info. Prop stream can only give us so much info. So what we found is it became 10 times harder when we went out of state. Now, some of you are saying, well, you can stream like that. You can find a way there's, you can do novation. And I get all that. But one thing that I've learned, and, and we've heard this from Ur Nightingale, you are standing in your own acre of diamonds. You are standing in your own acre of diamonds. You don't need to go very far to do a lot of deals. You have a lot of deals right in your right, right here. And you know, I got this from Dub Hopkins. You know, I was talking to Dub Hopkins yeah. about this. And Doug goes, Let me ask you a question. Do you even have 0.01% in your market? Like, are you even doing 0.01% of the deals in your market? And I'm like, nowhere near it. Then why the hell are you going anywhere else? Right. He's like, why don't you focus on where you're good at? Yep. Right. And so many of us, because we hear, you know, we hear someone talk about it on Instagram or we yep. watch a YouTube video and they go out of state and they get a two hundred thousand dollar novation deal and it's sexy and it's appealing. So I'm immediately going to go out of state. Right. Right. Sometimes, sometimes going into a different area just makes it harder for you. If you were just to realize and get over the mindset that. I can do deals in my backyard. It's not that hard. It's just a mindset. Change the mindset. Do the actions you need to take. You'll be surprised the amount of deals you do. So spot on. And, and it's interesting too because, you know, you and I met in the real, real estate community, you know, from Mike Ferry and just, you know, all of our collective friends, past, present, future, um, you know, being a great practitioner, a realtor, as an agent, listing agent, primarily always prospecting, door knocking, uh, cold calling and all of that. That's both how we both basically grew up in different eras, but that's basically both of our foundation. And I want to ask you, because I think this is so important. A lot of you already know this, but how important is it for the average realtor? Something we talked a lot about for years together. How important is for a realtor to diversify and really like game up on investing, wholesaling, fix and flipping, and like, and not just to be, oh, I'm going to open houses and right. cold call and just kind of maybe talk about the importance in that shift and especially the transformation you've done over the last five, seven years. Right. Well, it came from you, right? You, we were, you know, I was door knocking, just doing regular transactions. And then you come to me one day and you talk about wholesaling and I'm like, what is this? Right. What is yeah. this wholesale thing? Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and it's really, uh, you know, we talked to Ty and I've talked about it for years, right? We talked about being the hybrid agent, right? Being yeah. able to yeah. walk into an appointment and not just take a listing, yeah. right? You talk about sub two and seller finance. Like how many of you real estate agents walk into a transaction that you can purchase yourself, but because you don't know what you don't know, you take the listing, you sell the listing only to find out that that person then rented it out. It is making cash flow, yeah. right? Could you have gone directly to the seller and done the seller finance? Could right. you have gotten under contract and wholesaled it. Now I do understand we have to do what's best for the seller, right? Yeah. But sometimes that is what's best for the seller, right? Most of the time that is what's best for the seller. I'll have a, I'll never forget when I went on a listing appointment and then I finally present the wholesale opportunity to them and they go, that's possible. How fast can you do it? In my mind, I'm like, I think we can get it done in 10 days. Let's do it. Yeah. And in my, and, it, and a light bulb went off in my head and it's like, there are so many there's so many different ways to get deals, guys. However, what I found with real estate agents is that there's this box yeah. and we only see the box, right? And that box is either a listing or a buyer and that's it, right? And there's only two ways to make money. And how, 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 how do we make more money? We got to be able to go learn things that we don't know. We got to be get around your, get around people like Ty, get around people like Zuber, get around the, the one rental at a time community. Yeah. All these people here, there's a reason why these people are on these posters, right? right? It's because they're doing things that's a little bit different than everybody else, right? So my question to you, Ty, is how does agents change that mindset? Because, you know, you've helped right. me with it, right? How, and you've helped hundreds of other agents do it. How do they... How does this change? Yeah, so good. Such a great question. And I, and I want to go and say, you know, it's new conversations. It's hanging around with new people. Like even the fact that, I mean, how many seminars and events have you been to, Adrian, mm -hmm. over the last 10 years? Hundreds. Right. So you go, like, we go to seminars and events always looking. We're not looking for three days of content. We're looking for two or three really good ideas. And so for a lot of people, it's the same thing. It's make more calls, don't knock on more doors. Call your past clients, your friends, your family, your centers of influence. And so for us, I think just getting into new conversations for us, and it was actually you, we're at an event 
And, you know, we were speaking at the event and you were like, oh, dude, we got to meet this guy, Michael Zuber. Come on. And you were the one you grabbed me and was like, hey, well, let's go hang out with Michael. And it's like, look at the friendship and the amount of, you know, just relationship and how much we've learned from Michael and just the right. shift. So it's, I think, getting around new people. Hmm. It's getting into new rooms, different conversations that are elevated. And the truth is this, for a lot of realtors, your broker loves you. They probably want you to do well. They want you to do well. But also just know that they have one box, which is represent buyers, represent listings, if you have that ability to work with sellers. And it's do more, more open houses, more cold calls, more door knocking, whatever right. the case may be. And that's pretty much it. And so I think for a lot of people, even, you know, like to get outside of and just not to take away from your broker, your broker's great, right. still keep listing and selling. But get into some new rooms and new conversations and begin to explore and find that thing, that one or two things that you can add tools to your toolbox. So good. But well, now what if, okay, I hear you, Ty. I get it. I know I need to go to the different events. I know I need to ask the questions, but I'm just... I'm timid. I'm an introvert. I don't, I, I'm not used to doing this. I'm not, it's, it's difficult. I hear what you're saying and it's loud and clear, but, 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 but I'm here I, or, or, or I'm here and I'm so stuck in my insecurities. Like how do we break through that? I, I think you're the epitome of that because I think, you know, when I met you, you were kind of quiet, you know, and I could tell highly motivated, driven as all can be competitive, all of that vibe, but I just like, I love watching your, and for people that know Adrian who followed him, you know, and I think a lot of people are going to see this video, you know, this guy is transformed. And so I think it's, again, it's the right kind of self-talk. The fact of, you know, how often think about your affirmations and the mindset work, or even when we used to be coached by John Alexandrov. Right. Right. And like, you know, the statement of desire, right. you know, and going through and just chanting that or, you know, even like the scripts and dialogues and just, I think you just got to move your feet and really something I love that we both uh, picked up from Michael, which was not, it wasn't new to us, but I love it as a mantra of do the work, right. do the work. And it's like, so how good. did Adrian become Adrian? He does the work. It didn't just do the work. He's doing the work. You are the work. Talk, talk for you. What was your, like, yeah. for you, man, you've just transformed yourself. And then even one of the biggest, you know, I think brands, real estate, hybrid, investor, wholesaling businesses in SoCal. How did you transition? Yeah. It was the self-talk. You know, we, we got one mouth and two ears for a reason, right? We, we, we listen with both ears, right? And talk with one mouth. But what, what, I, what I learned is, is that prior to meeting you and hanging around you, hanging around Joe D, hanging around Ty, right? Oh, you, Ty. Yeah. Right. The, <laughs> Alex Lair. Uh, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. Right? My apologies. Uh, who else? Gino, right? It's Thatch. Thatch. Thatch was a big, was a big proponent big. of that, yeah. right? How are you talking to yourself, yeah. right? Like I remember when, I don't know if you remember, but I would say things and you'd be like, hey, dude, watch the loudspeaker. Like, watch that. Like, don't say that shit, right? Because one thing I realized is that I was voicing my, the, I was voicing the same thing I was struggling with, which then reinforced what I was, what, oh, so I'll give you a prime example. Let's just say you're not good with talking with people and you go, I'm not good with talking with people. All you're doing is just reinforcing that you're not good with talking with people. And then your self-belief then believes that you're not good with talking with people. So I had to learn to change how I spoke with myself. I had to learn to change the words that came out of my mouth, right? And as Tony talks about incantations and affirmations. So I would sit there and say to myself, I'm confident, I'm confident, I am confident, even though I may not feel confident, even though I may not at that moment be as confident as I think I am, I say it to myself over and over and over again. And then eventually my mind starts to believe it. Yeah. And as my mind starts to believe it, then I start to take the action, right? It's that as, as, cliche as it sounds guys it's just watching the words that come out of your mouth yeah. and now i'll say you know affirmations like we just did them outside right it's like yeah. money flows to me and ever and, um oh no he does uh, the affirmation from tony robbins right i now demand my subconscious mind to direct me in helping as many people as possible today to better their lives by giving me the strength the persuasion the bravery the humor whatever it takes to yeah. show these people and to get these people to Go. change their lives now right what is that reinforcing that's reinforcing everything i just said yes right or the the the, the money one right money flows to me in avalanches of abundance. We learned that through John yeah. Alexandrov, yeah. right? We learned that through Tony Robbins. Yes. And it's saying it to yourself over and over and over again. And eventually, you guys, 
you, you psych yourself out and before you know it, that's who you become. But it takes time. It takes work. As you say, you got to do the work. Yeah. I love it. Let's talk about something. So something we were at dinner last night and it was so like, um, we haven't seen each other. We Been family, out. kids, life, right? right? So life gets busy. We haven't had a chance to like talk or socialize and such. And I really enjoyed our dinner. One of the things that really stood out to me is like you said, okay. And I can remember like we were together several months ago and you're like, I'm going to, I'm all in on PPC. Right. And by the way, like PPC is, it's the fastest, easiest way to lose a lot of money, basically. <laughs> like, and again, no, Very fast. right. No disrespect to, there's a lot of service providers, but they give you about this much information. You just start spending money. Next thing you know, you're just blowing money. You're trying to figure out, okay, am I getting a return, whatever? And I love, like, you took a different approach. We both had, like, frustrations about marketing. Right. And you're like, dude, I'm going, like, I'm all, like you said, I'm going all in on PPC. And then last night you were talking about, oh, I'm learning that. And now I'm learning other media channels and such. Talk about your commitment and, like, how do you attack something like that? Okay, I'm going to learn PPC like, okay, you're still running your day-to-day -day business. Right. How do you actually carve out the time to learn the new stuff? How do you go all in? Because you, like no other, go all in. How does, that, how does that look for you? Yeah. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. Yeah. And there's somebody in our same exact position with the same frustrations that are, took the opportunity and ran with it. So what's the difference between us and them? Well, a little thing that you talk about that Michael talks about on every single show is you got to do the work, but you got to be able to sacrifice some time to do the work. So what I would do is baby, we would put baby down time for me to work on learning PPC, right? So from eight till midnight, if it took me till one o'clock in the morning, that's what I'm doing to sit there. I'm watching this course and I'm not finishing this course until I figure it out. Right. And, and, and it's, Having the mindset to know I'm not going to leave here until I figure it out, yep. right? It's burning the boats as Tony talks about and saying, I'm not going to, I'm not giving up until we fucking win. Yes. I'm not giving up until this works. Yes. And so my first campaign, bust, bust. Second campaign, deal in three weeks, right? And it's, but I had to go through that first campaign. I had to go through, what did it take me? Three months? I think it took me three months. I don't, I don't know if we recall exactly. I think it took me three months to actually get it down, yeah. right? And it was three months of every single night working on the craft, taking some time away from Netflix and chill, taking some time away from all the little things that you want to do to replace it with the things that you have to do. Yeah. And that's what really helped me. And now I'm like, okay. And now mind you guys, I'm not this big you know, I, I mean, I understand technology, but I'm, I don't, I don't, like I don't tech wizard. know, but I talk to myself and I tell myself, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. I'm going to find a way to figure it out. I'm going to be the best marketer in our company. I am going to be the best marketer in my market. Right. Even though I'm a salesperson, yeah. I'm going to figure this out. Right. Right. And it, it, it really comes down to number one, having the belief that you can do it. Right. But, and then two, taking the action behind that belief and carving out that time. So many people just rather turn on Netflix, yep. rather go do whatever, whatever else they need to do. And then the way I ask myself is how much money are you losing? How much money are you leaving on the table by not taking this time, by yeah. not investing the time, right? So you talk about different media channels, you know, we mastered PPC. Now I'm going to go figure out, okay, this, this right here costs a lot of money if other companies do it. So then how do I do it? Yes. Right. And I'm not looking to create a media company. That's not what I'm going to do, but I'll do it for our organization. Right. Right. And I know we'll get further ahead. Our cost per lead will be lower. Our cost, our uh, average profitable deal will be higher. Yeah. So I love that. And, and I want to just emphasize something you said. I want to repeat it because there was so much there. So great with everything you shared that new baby, 16, 17 months old. Yeah. Right. So your son goes to bed at, you know, your wife, you guys have dinner Baby goes to, you know, put the baby down at eight o'clock. And then you're saying, okay, you've done your day job. You got up, you went to the gym, you got in, you did all your sales oriented sales meetings and ran your sales team. And now you're okay, go home. And you're not, okay, let me just collapse on the couch. Right. He's getting back on his laptop, on his computer from eight to midnight or whatever the time is, because it's the new business you're creating. Right. And that's the thing is I think like people... Like, like I, I noticed it's common that, you know, what gets us here, like scripts and dialogues and being good with, you know, telephone or door knocking or whatever. It's like, yeah, that got you to this point. 
But the challenge is now all of a sudden it's hard to get people on the phone. You right. can't text message anymore. It's weird. Like right. marketing's become weird. And so it's like now you're learning that new thing. Um, talk about like just in terms of with always looking and learning and kind of reinvesting. Cause that's something too. I noticed last 10 years, how much money have you invested in yourself? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Thanks to you, by the way. Right. Because and this is one thing I, I, I have to acknowledge. We have to have people in our corner. Right. That that pushes and call us out on our shit. I don't I can't count how many times Ty has gotten in my face and been like, what are you doing? Why aren't you doing it this way? And and some of you may take that as why are you beating me up? Why are you? I take it with nothing but love. Yeah. I take it for nothing but love. Right. Yeah. Joe, I think about how yeah. many times Joe D would get up on my shit. Yeah. Right. And take it for love. Some of you guys run. Right. Yeah. You run when you hear that. And so what I've learned from hanging around good people like Ty, like Zuber, like Joe D, like Alex is you got to have those people that call you out on yeah. on on your bullshit because you will buy into your own bullshit. I bought into a lot of bullshit and I had to have people that 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 helped me. The Eiffel Tower was not built by one person. No. You are not going to get to where you want to go by yourself. You need people that are that are around you that push you and elevate you. I saw you involved in Tony. Guess what I do? I go and get involved in Tony. Yeah. I'm at Tony. I see uh, Alex. Right, yes. Alex. What are you involved in? I'm I'm in platinum. Well, I can't afford platinum. Okay, then if, then do this. Okay, done. Make the investment, right? right? Make it right then and there. Because success leaves clues. Follow the clues, right? right? We talk about modeling. You talk about modeling all the time, right? right? You guys, all I've ever done was just model Ty. I've just modeled Joe D. I've just modeled these great yeah. Michael Zuber. Zuber. Yeah. I just modeled these people on this poster. I just model. You just model them. Because if you can do that, you're going to get much further ahead than trying to figure, this, figure it out by yourself. I love it. So strong. So man. for you, Ty, I mean, you know, question, because we hear modeling, we hear, well, success leaves clues. We all hear all that and it's real practical, sure. right? But you've been a big component on investing in yourself. I mean, you've, I mean, how many Tony Robbins events have you been to? 30, 40 plus. Yeah. yeah you've Over plus. 30 years. Yeah. How much money have you spent in personal development? Hundreds and hundreds and, you know, probably seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000, something crazy like crazy. that over 30 years. How do you make that decision to to pull that because so I, I know for me it was it was fear yeah it was fear of i gotta invest this spend this money at the time it wasn't invest spend this money sure how did you get over that how did you push through that no i i think too that um it's it's having the faith and i think really knowing i like that you know when you spend money and there, there's a saying they say when you pay you pay attention mm. and so you know, in early on too, this is, this is great. Cause I can't even remember like Mike Ferry going to a Mike Ferry event or going to my first Tony event. I think about those early days and it was like, it was a big deal. Oh my God, this is going to be $500 or a thousand dollars or whatever. And it just, you know, it was like, I owned a car, my car was a $3,000 car at the time, right? Like a right. used Toyota Camry or something. And, um, and I'm like, this is a lot of money to go and hear some guy talk on state. Like, and I'm like, Okay, so when I did that, it was interesting that I actually really was like, okay, I'm going to get there early. I'm going to get the best seat. I'm going to take the best notes. I'm going to rewrite my notes every night. I'm going to make sure. And I think that kind of um, sense of uh, urgency or sense of importance about the content and the matter, I think it really, um, I think it really actually pulled me forward. I think it actually uh, moved the needle for me. And it's, it's interesting that sometimes I think at this you know, not on quote unquote level, but it just doing this for a long time now. I'm in my fifties and you know, it's like, sometimes I go another, another real estate seminar. Like really? Like, what, you know, what, are, you know, and I'm like, no, you're going to go, you're going to go, you're going to grow. Even if you get for me, even like this weekend we're together where this is Michael's event and we're doing this podcast, but there's an event going on outside. It's like, even if I get, one or two or three nuggets. Right. It's worth, even though I didn't have, um, we're both guest speakers here. We didn't pay right. to be in the room per se, but we still pay travel, hotel, meals, the whole thing. And it's like, no, that's an investment. If I get one or two or three great ideas, it's worth the time and energy and the investment. So I think for anything, I think even now, even for somebody whose money's tight, like YouTube, the fact if you're still watching this or listening to this, the fact that you're taking the time to invest in yourself, I think is just so key. So, so good. I think it's just taking action in that. I think let's bring it around. And, um, this has been fun. Yes. It's great. I love this. And we're going to do this love again. We'll, we'll, 
You know what? When we come back in April, we'll have Michael. Um, we'll do uh, maybe something at his house or oh, at, the, uh, cool. at his studio at his that'd home cool. or something. Well, it's a like, three-way podcast. Yeah, that'd be three-way. Dope. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll do a three-way or something. So yeah. we'll do an update on this. So um, let's talk about like for you, you've got a team, you and Nick, you guys are doing stuff. Obviously, you've got a great brand. You're doing all your brand building and that. What are some of the most important kind of execution things for you, for Nick, and or just SoCal? You know, your um, the you know what you're executing with your yeah. company, the marketing. What are like the two or three most important things for you, and maybe things that people should be thinking about at home? Yeah, and you got away. I got away from this, and this is really important. It's it's spending time in your business, and it's spending time in your sales department, and not getting out of that. Yeah. So, a mistake I made, guys, two years ago. I thought my head was bigger than what it was. Right, and we all get there. We all right? get there. Yeah, yeah for we sure. all get there. I thought that I could hire people to do everything for me. And there is a form of delegation, yes. But you cannot, I think Ryan said this, you can't delegate and then, it, and then, and then forget about it. Right. Like you have to check in on it. You have to make sure that it got done. So what I did is I thought, well, I can be this guru. I can be this, you know, Instagram guru, right? Let's just be real for, you know, yeah. let's just call it for what it was, right? And guess what I did? I took my eyes off of the sales organization. Uh, we lost like $1.3, $1.4 million by me doing that. Because I wasn't focused on the core drive of my business, which what is the core drive of my business? It's sales. Sales and marketing are the two most important drivers of your business. Now, marketing doesn't need to be paid marketing. It can be sweat, mar sweat equity, right? Where yeah. you're going in and you're actually door knocking and you're cold calling. And then the next is perfecting the, perfecting the sales to convert those leads that you generate to actual closed transactions, right? Sign contract and closed transactions. Yeah. Well, I was generating the leads, but I wasn't focused on the sales because my head was bigger than what it was. I thought I can be, you know, the, the, this guy that does everything on Instagram and it cost us a lot of freaking money because I got away from the core, which is my company, which is the sales of the heartbeat of the company. Yeah. Right. And so many of us get away from that. So to answer your question, it's really focusing on the sales. It's how do we get, if we lose a lead, if we lose a deal, how do we get better next time? How do we convert better? Right. Working with the sales crew on, on role play. Right. And, and having very tough role plays having very tough role plays with myself and with the other people, right? Yeah. Being very clear on what's not working and not falling into not falling into the mindset, well, I'm just going to keep doing it until it works. Yes, I get that, but if success leaves clues, it's going to tell you what's not working, right? And what you have to do is you got to be able to adjust that fast. But if you're not in it, if you're not paying attention to it, you ain't going to catch it. So good. And, and, and it was a costly mistake. I don't think you know this. November, December, January, no, yeah, half of November, December, January, and February, we lost $100,000, 100000 $120,000, $98,000, and $100,000 last year. Nick had, to, Nick had to personally pay the company $50,000. I had to take $300,000 and put it into the company just to keep it alive because I got away from the core, which was sales and marketing. So when you ask the time that it took for me to learn PPC, in my mind, I was like, I can't go backwards. Right. I have no choice to figure this out. Yeah. Right. Because I just cost it the company a year. Yeah. I just cost the company a year because I wanted to do something that wasn't my core. We talk about authenticity, right? We just had, right. you know, Sean on talking about authenticity, right. which was a great interview, guys. You got to check it out. Ty just interviewed Sean. It's absolutely incredible. He talks about authenticity. I wasn't being my, my true authentic self. Yeah. I was doing something different. And I know you had to have seen it. I know some of you out there had to have seen it, right? And but but it takes that. It takes some it takes some of us to go through that. Yeah. And I hope that some of you can listen in and catch on and don't make that mistake. Cuz I had to make that mistake and I'm grateful that I did because I'll never I the company's going to be the number one company in Southern California because I had to go through that. So strong. So, so strong. So strong. And and I just love that you're sharing and being vulnerable and just like being real. Again, authentic. Yeah. And the truth is is it like we all do it, right? We get success and it feels good and we forget about like keeping the main thing, the main thing, right. which is for any business, it's right. sales and marketing and just, and even for the, like the solopreneur the, or the one agent slash wholesaler, realtor slash wholesaler, fix and flipper. It's like you, you know, we, I have to keep doing my daily things, right? Or, you know, you're, you're going to wake up and be like, oh shit, what? 
what happened. And, and by the way, we all go through that. Yeah. It's cycles. It's ebb and flow. I've been there. We all are there, you know, and it's ebb and flows. We get in those cycles. So anything else you want to just part with or, I, you know, again, I, I, I contribute a lot of my success to, to you brother, yeah. right? You, you know, I'd look at you and Eddie, like, you know, big brothers of mine for you, you've always been in, you've always been in it. I've never seen you get out of it. Right. What was the mindset for you always staying in it or how did you keep yourself always in it? Cause you're, you're, you're involved in every deal you're, you're involved right. in your day to day. Right. Yeah. And, and it took some, it took some time for me to see that. And I admire that. How, how did you. It, it's, it's interesting. And I was sharing with somebody else about this. It's a um, good question. I've had been able to think about it a little bit, but for me, I've had uh, big teams, 18 people, um, you know, hundreds of deals annually and all that. And I've done that. And then I also realized too, I like what I'm doing now. I like that it's smaller, it's leaner, hmm. but I also have the freedom that I don't have like, and again, you and I are the same, but we're also very different. Right. Right. In that, you know, I'm a little leaner and I don't have the responsibility necessarily. Like a lot of my team, all of my team is virtual, you know, it's outsourced some of it and it's somebody that, you know, is physical in my marketplace, but not in a physical office. So I think just with, you know, the chapter I'm in, in my life with, you know, young family and that I like that, you know, this was strategic, you know, that I can basically have a more simple business. Doesn't mean that maybe I will want to ramp up and, you know, double down or triple down on marketing and such, but I, actually thoroughly just enjoy it. And I don't know if it's just conditioning of, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, like just conditioned that I actually enjoy having my fingers in the deal. I actually enjoy like a complicated transaction. And it's interesting. Okay. In fact, I figured out over the last year or two, because I can get in and figure out a complicated deal. It became a little bit of a, like an addiction of, Oh, it's significance and it's, mm. and it's some variety and it's, you know, six human needs and it's fun. And it's <laughs> like, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. But in fact, sometimes those complicated deals and the fact that I'm in it and I've got my fingers in the deal, it actually, um, it, it holds me back, you know, like one weird com complex or ugly deal can prevent five or 10 deals. Mm. And so I'm coming to the reality of, I also like, I need to be more focused on, um, flow hmm. in the flow, you know, hmm. and not complicated and simple, still of service, win-win, mutually beneficial, but also like, I don't have to take the most complex probate slash, um, pre foreclosure slash there's an auction on Tuesday slash, by the way, there's a squatter, by the way, there's rent control and there's a bunch of code violations on it. I'm like, normally I'm like, Oh, this is great. But also it's like, it's great, but it's sucking the life out of me. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, just really kind of figuring out where the, right. not the balance, but just like, is the, uh, the juice worth the squeeze mm. And then also too, just like simplicity. So I do like having my fingers in the deal and, um, man, I really, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you shared in the way that, um, not only that, but always, there's always a lot of love and always a lot of appreciation two way street. You keep me on my toes. And I always say, I said this last night at dinner. I said this multiple times today, but, um, in my fifties, I like to hang out with younger cats, not just younger cause they're younger, but because they're hungry and you always force me to think and Hey, what are, what else could I be doing and what are the new opportunities? So dude, thank you right. so much for being a great friend and thank I love you, what brother. we're doing. I'm looking forward to doing this again. Yeah. Can't wait to run it back. Run it back. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Adrian Hernandez. This is Ty Leon Guerrero. If you guys aren't following him, make sure you do that. And if you are subscribed to Michael Zuber's channel, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> smash yeah. that subscribe button, hit the like button on all of his videos, guys. We appreciate you for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode. Let's go. Yeah.